Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to fail faster in a cloud. This is taken from an actual customer scenario where a customer was running into an issue that they were noticing that when they were working in Google Cloud, the failover was just taking a long time. So we'll talk about two ways that we can make the failover happen a little bit faster. So first we're going to cover how Active Standby works in Google Cloud using the Google Cloud Load Balancer. Then we're going to walk through how the health checks work and this is going to explain why things kind of take longer in a public cloud environment. After that, we'll kind of talk about how to optimize the failover. So what are those two things that we did to make the failover happen a little bit better? And then we'll do a demo of it so you can kind of see this in action. So let's talk about how failover works in Google Cloud using the Google Cloud Load Balancer. So what we can see here on this diagram is we have the client here that's connecting into Google Cloud. It's going through the Google Cloud Load Balancer and then from there it's going over to the big IP. Once it hits the big IP, the traffic's going through. What you'll also see in here is that you have the Google Cloud Load Balancer is also doing health checks to the big IP. So this is a case where we have load balancers load balancing load balancers. A little bit odd, but not uncommon in the public cloud environment. What you see here is we've got the data plane traffic going over to port 80 and you've got the monitor traffic going over to port 40,000. This is how our Google uh, deployment manager template deploys by default. Next we'll look at what happens when you do failover using this template. Uh, in this scenario we're doing kind of a planned outage type of scenario where we're putting the big IP1 into standby mode and what happens at this point is two things are happening. First is that both the health check and the data plane port that was open, that's port 80 and port 40,000, will stop accepting traffic. This is a problem because as you can see here, we've got traffic that's being dropped as the, uh, as the Google Cloud Load Balancer is waiting to detect the availability of the second big IP. This is not ideal. And this is going to be dictated by the check threshold as well as the healthy threshold that you have configured on the Google Cloud Load Balancer. So how can we improve this situation? We're going to improve this using two changes on a big IP. The first is we're going to use traffic group none. This is not something that you would want to do in your on-prem environment. What this will do is this will have both big IP devices answer for the traffic. This is okay to do in the Google Cloud environment because Google owns the network and it's not going to create a network conflict. If you try to do this in your on-prem environment, you would probably start to see errors like IP conflict and that type of error. So not something that you want to do in an on-prem setup. The second item is, is that we're going to use a separate monitor for the Google Cloud Load Balancer. What this is going to enable us to do is to tell the Google Cloud Load Balancer to stop sending traffic to the big IP device, but will still continue to accept that traffic on behalf of the client. Now let's take a look at how this new setup looks like. In this scenario, you can see that unlike in the previous scenario, when the big IP one is put into standby mode, it only stops accepting traffic on that port 40,000, the monitor port. It still accepts traffic on port 80, so clients are still going to get the traffic going through. Once the Google Cloud Load Balancer sees that Big IP 2 is available, it will start sending traffic to Big IP 2, and at the same time, it will stop sending traffic to Big IP 1 now that it knows that that device is not healthy. And this is the second part of it where you can see that that failover has occurred. Much more graceful than the previous scenario where we were dropping packets. Now that we've looked at how this is happens, let's go take a look at what it looks like in the demo environment. In this demo, we're going to be using the Google Deployment Manager template to deploy a pair of big IP devices, as well as a Google Cloud Load Balancer. After we've deployed the template, we've created a demo virtual server. In this demo virtual server, we have added a iRule to send the name of the big IP device that is handling the traffic via a X big IP header. First, we'll look at doing a failover that is the bad failover. In this case, what we will observe is that as the failover is occurring, we are dropping connections. 
we can see that the connections that are being dropped through the use of this Python script that displays trouble when there is a failed connection. Next, we will go back to the Big IP to change the settings to optimize the failover. Here, we are changing the traffic group from the default of traffic group one to traffic group none. Next, we will use this bogus virtual server that is attached to traffic group one to act as a health monitor. Enable to have the Google Cloud Load Balancer use this health monitor, we will change the existing health monitor to send the traffic to the bogus virtual server through the use of this I rule. Now we are going to rerun our test of failing over from the big IP2 to the big IP1. Here you can see that the big IP has failed over and we have observed no dropped connections. Just for a quick comparison, let's look at these two failovers side by side. Here you can see that the bad failover starts to drop connections immediately. Here we can see that the good failover has failed over and there are no dropped connections. That concludes today's demo. Thank you very much for watching.